Bonjour and welcome to Paris. Why are we in Paris? Well, we're here to spend a bit of time with a car that we've been trying to get our hands on for ages. A car that you have been pleading with us to feature on the channel for ages. Well, ask and you shall receive, mes petits choufleurs, because here it is. Look, it's the Dacia Spring, quite literally Europe's cheapest electric car. We're gonna find out if it's any good today by putting it through one of the most gruelling tests of man and machine ever invented. Trying to drive literally anywhere in Paris. This should be fun. So, this is the Dacia Spring, this is Paris, and this is fully charged. If you've never been to Paris, driving through it may not seem like much of a challenge at all. In fact, it might sound like a rather lovely way to spend an afternoon. It isn't. Paris is one of the most stressful cities I have ever driven in, due to the combination of ancient, narrow, winding roads, Parisian pedestrians who are in no rush at all, and Parisian drivers who really are. And if you do anything to displease them, they will let you know. The, uh, the other thing worth noting about this video is that cameraman Andy has never been to Paris. So we thought we might do a little route around some of the, uh, one of the famous landmarks, showing the sights and the scenes. That's right, Andy, you've never been to Paris before, have you? No, I haven't. Oh, you can almost hear that almost childlike excitement in his voice, can't you? Now then, quick introduction to the Dacia brand for those of you who may not be familiar. It's a Romanian car brand and it's part of Renault Group. And the focus of Dacia has always been cheap, affordable, practical, utilitarian transport. That is what they are all about. And if you're watching this in the UK, you may be thinking, well, I don't really see many of those knocking about, but they're not that big in the UK. But in Europe, it's fairly huge. I was recently on holiday in Sicily and I was tripping over Dacia dusters everywhere I went because of course if you live somewhere where the roads aren't especially good or they're extremely narrow and it's not uncommon for a car to come along and take your wing mirror off you want something that is cheap simple easy to fix and with the spring well it's bringing its philosophy of cheap affordable simple to electric cars which is really quite exciting because as I'm sure you know most car brands currently making electric cars including ones known for cheaper stuff just seem fixated on big expensive things with lots of fancy toys. We don't need lots of fancy toys, at least not all of us do. Just while I'm figuring out how to get off this roundabout, let me tell you the number that you really want to know about the Dacia Spring, and that is the price. Because here in France, this car starts at around 17,000 euro, but after the generous government grants, that price falls to about 12 and a half thousand euro, which is the equivalent of about ten and a half thousand pounds in the UK. That is cheap, decisively Europe's cheapest electric car, cheaper even than something like the Smart 4.2, which has about nine miles of range. And the really exciting thing is that Dacia are currently considering bringing this car to the UK. They're kind of analysing the way it's performing in Europe and they're going to make a decision based on that as to whether it's cost effective to build a right hand drive model. I'm hoping that if we like this car as much as we're expecting to, we, the people of Fully Charged, can band together and encourage them to bring this car, man just tried to kill me for no reason, over to the UK. Oh good, it's another roundabout. here so I'm gonna do something very Parisian. Oh, je suis désolé monsieur, mais désolé. Ah, oh, that worked out quite nicely. Ah, Andrew, to your right, may I present to you the Eiffel Tower? Look at that. All right. Sound enthusiastic, Andrew. Try my best. Mm. 
Shall we have a little browse around the outside of this thing? Let's. Uh, where do we begin? Well, Dacia calls this a SUV-like city car, which is truthfully a phrase that makes me want to throw up in my mouth, swallow it, and then throw it up again. But people like SUVs these days, so I get it. And there's a kind of general theme with Dacia's where they're kind of cheap and cheerful, but they like to be a bit kind of rugged and tough as well. So this is kind of trying to look a bit off-roady with these plastic wheel arches and kind of something resembling a skid plate around the back and the slightly raised right height and these sort of plastic roof rails. It won't go off-road. It's a front-wheel drive city car, but people like that kind of aesthetic, so that's what they've gone for. These wheels, I quite like these, right? You look at those and you think, oh, they've splashed on some alloys, but no. Those are actually plastic covered steelies, but they look really nice. And if you curb one, just pull it off, buy a replacement cover, slap it on instead of spending a hundred quid getting your wheels recut. It's the Dacia way. Around the back, again, not a huge amount to speak of. I like this. Look at the boot button. It's like on the Porsche Taycan, it's just a button. That's so clever. What, what, you don't need to stick your hand under here and get your fingers all grubby. No, just press the little button and we reveal a boot that is, I believe, 290 litres, reasonable size, reasonable size. One thing that's slightly less reasonable in size is the rear seats because Dacia will tell you that this is a proper four adults car. The thing is, it's the same size as a Fiat 500 and doesn't have bespoke EV architecture. So it's amazing if they have managed to pull that off. I mean, what an incredible feat of, no, they haven't. They haven't pulled it off at all. This is a, uh, no, I mean, Headroom, pretty good. It's a tall car, so no issues in that department. But as you can see, seat in a normal person's driving position, it is a bit snug. You know, it's not that bad. It, getting in is tricky. But once you're in, mm, bearable, bearable. Four and two half adults, I'd call this. So what's the Dacia Spring like to drive then? Well, first things first, it's just such a delight to be driving a really compact electric car again. I love small cars, especially in a city. City driving in a big car, even a medium car, is so much more stressful. You're just worried about losing your wing mirrors or curbing a wheel any given time. In this car, A, I'm not worried about that because it's so small that I'm not going to, and B, even if I do, I don't care because it's so cheap. It's so cheap, I just, fix it, no big deal. And this really is a small car. It's actually slightly narrower than a Fiat 500 and ever so slightly longer and a fair bit taller. But it just feels so compact, even in these narrow little Parisian streets. We're squeezing through gaps effortlessly. I'll peel back the curtain a little bit and tell you that our camera car for this shoot, the car that we traveled to Paris in, is a Hyundai Ionic 5, an amazing electric car, one of our favorites. But it's not a great size for Paris, let's just say. And of course, what's nicer than driving a small car in a city? Driving a small electric car. It just makes so much sense. You've got the instant zippiness from that motor. This is a very, very modest motor. It is not a quick car, but it still feels perfectly punchy when you're in a city and you're pulling away from traffic lights, which is all that you need from a city car. And actually, in a city like Paris, where the sort of atmosphere of the place is quite tainted by all the beeping of horns and the smoke coming out of the cars and the noise of the engines. You can't help but think to yourself, how much nicer would this place be if everyone was driving silent electric cars? They'd still be beeping at each other all the time, but yeah, it'd be nicer. And in terms of customizability, driving modes, forget about it. Maximum simplicity is the brief here. I've got two pedals and a wheel. That's about it. The power in this car is incredibly modest, incredibly modest. It's only got a handful of horsepower, but it doesn't feel underpowered because in a city you never go more than 15, 20 miles an hour. And all you need to do is get up to that speed quite quickly, which this car can very comfortably do. Right, stats, let's have some stats. I, I tried to do this bit while out driving earlier today, but turns out driving in Paris, multitasking, bad idea. So we're gonna do it here. Power, 33 kilowatt, front wheel drive motor, which is the equivalent to about 44 horsepower. 
This is surely the slowest electric car that I've ever driven, and I'm completely fine with that, because most of them are too quick anyway, and it's more than enough for city driving. 33 kilowatts, that goes down to 23 kilowatts when you're in eco mode, which is really properly slow. Top speed about 62 miles an hour, naught to 62. You ready for this? 19 seconds. That's some sort of record for electric cars, surely. And I love that for it. And I can assure you, driving around town, it doesn't feel too slow. It keeps up with traffic. That's all you need. Range, 150 miles uh, WLTP combined. They reckon about 180 city driving. Those numbers are probably a little bit optimistic. But again, city car, tiny battery, about what you'd expect. I think you're probably getting the same sort of range as, say, a Honda e. Finally, worth knowing that there is already a business version of this car, which is basically a version designed for car sharing uh, apps and services. In fact, we have seen lots of little rentable Dacias parked on street corners all around Paris, which is beautiful to see. Dacia Springs, no less, the electric one. What a beautiful sight. And next year, there's actually going to be a cargo version of the spring with, get this, 700 litres of space, 700 litres, a proper little hauler for last mile urban deliveries. Beautiful. I have been beeped at 30 times today already. Ah, next up on our little scenic road trip, Le Arc de Triomphe. What a magnificent structure that is. Uh, Jack, this isn't the Arc de Triomphe, is it? It is the Arc de Triomphe, Andrew. Excellent knowledge, isn't it beautiful? It's beautiful, but we're not driving around it, are we? Mais oui, mon ami. Why? How bad can it be? Oh! My sweet, merciful baby Jesus, what is this? What is this? It's a 30 lane roundabout with no rules. Okay, okay. Oh, no, I, yeah, I guess it's you that's going. This is, Andy, what is going on? He's awfully quiet. Oh, this is madness. Okay, okay. We're hugging the inside line here, hugging the apex of the corner, keeping it nice and tight. Oh, God, taxi. Jack, I hate you. Oh, oh. I have some bad news. We've missed our exit. We're going to have to go around again. Not joking. <laughs> He's having a lovely time. Time to dismount. This is where it gets a little bit tricky. Yes, I see you. I didn't see him. Visualize your exit point. Oh, oh, oh. Yes, 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 we did it. Never again, Jack. <laughs> Right then, welcome to the inside of the Dacia Spring. I'll take you through some of the features. It won't take long because there are none. You know, this is potentially my favorite spec sheet that I've ever read for a new car. You know your car is basic when you're bragging about things like front and rear windows. Front seat back pockets. My God, they do. Incredible. It's a, it's a very simple car, this one. This one's actually posh because it's got the optional seven inch touchscreen on the base car, it's just a three inch. And I, I'm not convinced it's even digital. I think it's just like an extra sketch, but it's all done in a really nice way. That whole utilitarian, rugged, slightly off-roady theme, it all carries over in here. So for example, all the buttons are just really big and they're really nice to press. Likewise, these dials, they've got a nice reassuring weight to them. It's all a bit kind of chunky. Same for the gear selector down here. It's a big, hefty, sturdy thing. And the car, despite being made of slightly cheap plastics, really feels quite robust and sturdy. And I love that about it. We've got to talk about these fake buttons. I've never seen so many fake buttons in my whole entire stupid life on a car. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> there, are seven. there are seven fake buttons on this steering wheel. And my favorite part is that two of the buttons that there are, these two here, serve the uh, the um, the cruise control. 
This car doesn't have cruise control. <laughs> it's so basic. Another thing I really like in the gauge cluster here, uh, the little symbol next to my battery amount is a little petrol pump. And I like to imagine that there was a whole conversation at Dacia HQ where we were like, they were like, should we change that to a, to a charge symbol? Like what, and add 20p to the price? Are you insane? No, uh, no corner has been left uncut where it can be, but they've done it in a nice way. This screen, that's big enough for me. I've got a USB port, I can plug my phone in, I get Android Auto and Apple CarPlay on this upgraded one. What more do you need from a basic car interior? It's a simple utilitarian electric car. It's so rare to see new cars with so little going on. It's kind of a breath of fresh air. This is what many of you have been crying out for in the comments, a grocery getter, a car that just gets you from A to B with no frills, no unnecessary toys, nothing that's gonna break. Well, here it is. In terms of weak points of the Dacia Spring, well, it would be quite nice to have adjustable regen braking. I think all electric cars should offer the ability to do proper one pedal driving. That's just an electric car staple for me. I'm quite surprised that they've decided to omit that, presumably in the name of cost saving. Aside from that, I mean, I could sit here and say I wish it had more range, but I don't think I really do. I think it's probably got plenty for the job it was designed to do. I mean, I've been driving around Paris for all day, five hours. I've got 85% battery left. You don't cover an awful lot of distance when you're driving in a city, certainly in a city like Paris with appalling traffic. And for most people, I think this would be more than enough car, more than enough range. Most of the time, this is a mindset change that we all need to make going into EVs. You buy the car that you need 99% of the time, not the car that you need 1% of the time. Just because you drive to France once a year doesn't mean you need a 400 mile electric car. This will do you most of the time. And then for that one day, we need to drive a bit further, borrow something, rent something, but keep it simple, keep it basic. Buy what you need and nothing more. Concluding thoughts on the Dacia Spring? I think it's absolutely wonderful. I think it's delightful. There is such joy in a really simple car like this. It just gets the job done. No frills, no unnecessary stuff. And in this day and age where every new electric car seems to come with two giant touchscreens and a million different facial recognition features, I think it takes a bit of courage to make a car as brutally simple as this. And I really admire Dacia for it. I really hope that they bring this car to the UK because I think it would sell very well and I think it would prove to other brands that it's okay to keep it simple. We don't need all the fancy toys all the time. Some people like that stuff. Some people would rather just save a bit of cash and have something that just gets them from A to B easily and simply and safely. And that is what this car is all about. I love it. Robert Llewellyn would go crazy for this thing. It, if the second he sees this video, he's going to put an order in for like six of them. This is Bobby Lou in car form. You know, it's always going to be the Porsche Taycans and the Teslas and the Polestars of this world that steal all the headlines, all the attention. But cars like this, cars like this are the ones that are actually going to make this thing happen, this electric revolution. If it's going to happen in a big way, en masse, then we need cars that most people can afford and we're still missing them. These are the cars that we need the most. Well, we're here, we're back at the Eiffel Tower. We survived Parisian traffic. The spring excelled in every challenge we threw at it. Parisian traffic, by the way, was so bad. We were like, hey, do you know what would be fun if we drove around Paris and got stuck in traffic all day? It's not fun. It's very stressful. <laughs> it's been a funny old day. I feel slightly manic, but my main takeaway is this is a wonderful little thing. I'm not just saying that, it really is. Dacia, please, please bring it to the UK. In fact, fully charged subscribers, you watching this right now, if you would buy one of this, get down in the comments and say, I would buy that car. We can convince them, there's lots of us. There's so many of us. If we all say we'll buy one and then actually buy one, they'll bring it. It's only a hundred quid a month. Come on guys, for the cause. So there we go, the Dacia Spring, well worth the journey. I wish I could take it home with me. Please make sure to like and subscribe. Be sure to leave a comment down below to let me know what you think of this car. And if you have been, thank you for watching.
Calling all European fully charged fans, don't forget that we'll be bringing our smash hit live show to the Netherlands next March. See you there.